Sometimes you have to willingly walk through the fire to get what you want. Welcome to the road to success. Welcome to entrepreneurship. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Holland, and my goal is to teach you all the tested tips and tricks to actually be successful and get what you want in life. So today we're going to talk about the tactics that I personally use to be more productive. Hard life, strong people. Strong people, easy life. Easy life, weak people. Weak people, hard life. That's the cycle. This may just be me, but I have acknowledged that no one's going to curl the weights for me. No one's going to wake up at 4 a.m. for me. No one's going to make sure I actually sit down and get my work done, and no one's going to ensure that I will be successful. This is the name of the game. No one can learn the profitable skills for me. I have to do that myself. I have to put in the work. And sometimes that just means making the easy thing more difficult or less accessible than doing the hard thing. So, that being said, let's talk about it. The first thing, reading. I have not been known to be much of a reader ever like at all i very much so prefer to actually do things with my hands whatever that be so if i'm playing video games if i'm working out if i'm i hate running but i'll do it you get the point i like doing things not sitting down and reading it is what it is however i have acknowledged that for me to be successful i need to learn things and the most accessible way to get knowledge and stand on the the shoulders of giants is to actually just read books a lot of them have written books for us to actually go through and learn the things from and then implement. And that is the most important part, the implementation. And no one's going to sit me down and strap me against something and make it happen. I have to do it myself it is what it is. So one of the things that I've noticed that has helped me as someone with ADHD and like squirrel brain, just whatever more interesting there is, sometimes it's not even outside. I'll just start daydreaming. It is. These things happen. I've noticed that... For me, what I will do when it comes down to reading is that I'll actually buy the audiobook alongside the regular book and put in headphones, noise canceling preferably, and listen to it as I'm reading. That helps me actually focus in on the words that are on the page because I'm listening to it and I'm actually seeing the words. That doubles down because it helps me actually remember the stuff because you have two inputs instead of one. Two instead of one. <laughs> one is audio and one is visual. Another thing is that if I really can't focus on whatever that day is, I have been known to either A, move myself to a different environment. Sometimes I'm around too many people or there's too many interesting things going on. So I'll just move to another room or, and I have done this before multiple times, sit in a corner or in front of a wall with nothing else in front of me. So if I look up and I try to look around, the only thing I'm going to see is the wall. And I promise you this, whatever is on the page is more interesting than the paint that is on the wall. Trust me. Tip number two. One of the things that I've been doing recently is waking up earlier. And for all you morning people, this is going to be very difficult, but it has helped me actually get my work done. I go to sleep earlier because that means I can wake up earlier because that means all my friends and all the people that I want to talk to are asleep and I can't talk to them. Number one. Number two, because there's all those things, it makes it that much easier because I feel isolated. I can actually focus on whatever the thing is that I need to get done right there and then. So... I have been going to sleep at, I aim for 9.30, I typically knock out by 10, and then I will wake up at 4 a.m. The difficult part is the waking up, like actually getting up and not going back to sleep. My issue was that I would wake up, turn off the alarm, and knock back out, and I sleep like a log. Really. Solution? I would take my phone and put it across the room and the volume to the loudest it can go. So when it goes off, the only way it's going to go off is if I get up, out of bed, walk across the room, and turn it off. And then from there, I'm already up. I would have to cave to my desire to walk across the room again and go back to sleep. The easier thing is to just continue walking. Go to another room. Go to the bathroom and turn the lights on. Go get a glass of water. Something. Anything it takes for me to actually stay out of bed and not knock back out. And it is uncomfortable. It's going to be. Improvement and change is always going to be uncomfortable. You can either seek out comfort or you can improve yourself. They are not the same thing. The comfortable thing is not going to get you where you want to go. I promise you that. At least not from my findings. From my findings, this has been the rule. The third thing, my phone. I'm sure you know that our cell phones, I'm just going to skip that. My phone is very interesting to me. It has all the things that I really like and all the things I want to check on. It has everything. It is a dopamine hit away 
blocked by a lock screen that opens automatically. Thank you, iPhone. That being said, when I'm focusing and I'm really just thinking about going on my phone again, sorry. When I'm trying to focus and my phone is on the desk or in my vision, I start thinking about it because naturally that's where the dopamine is. The easier thing to do for me that I have found is put it inside of my desk. I'll put it in my desk, out of sight, out of mind. I'll put it on silent in the desk and then I can actually focus on the thing at hand. I have conditioned myself to actually pretend my phone doesn't exist and I routinely don't worry about it anymore. I can't tell you how long it took, but now I'm thankful that I did that. If that doesn't work for you, there's always other options. You can put it in another room, you can put it down the hall, or you can give it to someone. In fact, I've met people that said that they do something similar. They actually give it to a loved one or a sibling or, or whoever they're living with and tell them, do not give me my phone back under any circumstances until I have shown you proof that I've completed insert the task that they had to do. If that works for you, go do that. It all comes down to making sure that you ensure your own success. No one is going to make sure that you get what you need to get done without getting paid for it. And I assume you just, it's easier to just do it yourself. You owe it to yourself to do everything within your power to get what you want in your life. Now, hopefully that means that you want to help other people like I'm trying to do, because those are the kinds of people that I've made this video for. The lesson that I'm really trying to drive home with this is that I have acknowledged that I like doing the easy thing. And so it is easier for me to make the easy thing more difficult to access than to try and continue doing the hard thing with the easy thing in my mind, or at least visible, or you get what I'm trying to say. If the path, if the path of least resistance is what you seek out, then make the path of least resistance doing the thing that you need to get done in the first place. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. On top of this, or on top of all of that, I should say, after doing all of these different things and after consistently keeping myself or holding myself accountable and remaining productive, I have proven to myself that I'm actually capable of doing all the things that I've set my mind to because setting your mind to it is just as simple as genuinely putting forth your best effort to make sure that the things you set out to do would be impossible for you not to make them happen. In actually doing the things and completing those tasks, you re well, I have found that I've reinforced for myself that I'm capable of doing more than I've thought that I was able to do. And so when I come to another difficult thing, it is easier for me to jump on that and actually take care of it as soon as possible rather than caving, like caving to the thing I really want to do or the simple thing or the easy thing. You, you get what I'm trying to say. I don't think I'm a special case. I think you can do the same exact thing that I do with these different examples that I've given you today. It's not going to be easy and it's not supposed to be because that's the barrier to entry. The barrier to entry for success is no, is acknowledging the difficult thing, understanding it is going to be difficult and doing it anyway. Hard life, strong people, them's the rules. If you want to be a strong person, if you want to be a successful person, you need to acknowledge that these things are going to be hard and not wish them to be easy because if they were easy, if being successful was easy, everyone would be successful. And if everyone was successful, it wouldn't hold the value that it does today. That's how these things work. So it will take some effort. It will take some time. It will take, it won't happen overnight, but consistently striving to get better at these things that are difficult for you. I genuinely feel will be better in the long run. So we've talked about all the different types of ways to be productive and the barrier to entry to success. Now, do you know what doesn't have a high barrier to entry? My free school community, where you can surround yourself with growth-minded, success-oriented individuals, and you can have direct access to me so I can actually help you learn the tactics that are required to actually get what you want in life. I'm very easy to talk to. Just send me a message and we can work from there. So just go in the description, click the link, and I will see you when you get there. Today is day 21. Matthew Holland, thank you for your sweet, precious attention, and I will see you tomorrow.